Hi, this is Mike Lopez, and in this video, let's see if we can demystify sinusoids and phase angles. Okay, notice uh, here in black, f of x equals sine x. Okay, the black waveform is this guy here, of course, um, just in case you haven't got the best quality screen. Um, and you can see this sine wave starts at zero, peaks positively, negatively, and goes back to zero here, and then it just repeats over and over and over, and that's what a sine wave does. And what we say is a sine wave completes one full cycle when it's completed two pi radians. And if you remember <coughs> what radians were all about, so essentially you start here, you work all the way around the circle, one revolution, and we've covered two pi radians. Okay, obviously, or you know, at school you used to say uh, 360 degrees to go all the way around. If you get to this point here, you would have done 180 degrees from the starting point, or if you like, in trigonometric measure, pi radians to get to that point there. Okay. So that's what's happened there. So this thing has gone, although I'm going to change it to red just to emphasize it. To go from there to there, you've gone halfway through one complete cycle. And so there you have 180 degrees. It's equivalent to pi radians. Okay. And then you just double those two figures to achieve two pi radians or 360 degrees. In terms of this idea of phase angle, so we're looking at this thing here and this thing here, when we have a leading phase angle, so plus means leading, what that means then is if you look at the blue waveform there, okay, that's this one, it leads what the original waveform was by this amount, pi by 4. So what do we mean by pi by 4? Pi by 4, well we know what pi is, pi is 180. So what's 180 divided by 4? <clears throat> yep, it's 45 degrees. Okay, so we have a 45 degree lead here. And when we say lead, we're, um, a waveform will lead another if it peaks before the other one, okay? Mm. So in terms of if this was drawn on an oscilloscope, the whole thing would be moving this way, be coming towards you, and if that's you there, what comes to you first is this one here, okay? So the blue wave hits you first, so that peaks first. So that has the leading um, <clears throat> phase. And conversely, down the bottom here, this one, um, we've got this minus sign. And so that's denoted by this green one here, not lag. So it takes a bit longer for the green wave to come to you. So if you like, here's you sitting here. And all this stuff is coming your way. Okay, so blue hits you first, then the black, and then the green. So that's what we mean by lagging and leading phase angle. Okay, what I'd like to do is to have a look at a special case here. Here we can see um, what looks a bit like um, a similar case, but we have different numbers involved here. Okay, if we go back to that previous one, look, we had 1 and minus 1 as the amplitudes, okay, which is standard on a calculator. Okay, if you were to go on a calculator and type sine of 90 in degrees mode, of course, sine 90, it should give you 1. And if you were to type the sine of 270, you'd be asking this height here and sine 270 should give you minus one on your calculator but we don't have to restrict ourselves to sine waves just of 
uh, magnitude 1 and minus 1. We can have any magnitude we like. Uh, so here we've chosen 8. So that magnitude corresponds to this number here. <clears throat> okay, or any of these in fact, because these are just of course, as we've just explained, um, separated by different phase angles. So the first 8 corresponds to the peak value here. This <clears throat> sine term here tells you, well, it's a sinusoidal shape, so it goes up and down like this, like a sinusoid does. Um, this 2 pi is standard. Forget the star, that's just used in the graph simulator um, to make the simulation happen. 2 times pi. So we're looking at a function which is, um, what we can call it, supply voltage equals 8, which is the peak value. It's a sine wave. Um, here we put in frequency information and here we put in frequency here we have the phase information okay and you'll see this very commonly through us engineering and I suppose what we'd like to do um, is to be able to uh, find for t, possibly. Okay, so how are you going to shift all that around and find for t um, and, you know, produce um, a correct answer in terms of picoseconds, nanoseconds, microseconds, whatever it might be. Okay, well, the first thing we need to know is um, what's the value for frequency? Um, why don't we use frequency equals 2 megahertz. Now you know what 2 megahertz means. It means 2 million hertz or 2 times 10 to the 6 hertz. Okay, it's not just 2. Don't just forget the capital M. Um, 2 million. Okay, uh, let's have the supply voltage Vs be 4 volts and we're going to find for t. In other words, I want t equals blah blah blah, or in this case, an actual time. Um, so the first point in time where t is 4. Okay, now if you look at these graphs here, you've got minus pi by 8 there, so it's the green graph. You're looking at the green graph. When does the green graph go to 4? initially. Well, here's for there. So we're looking at that point in time. There. What is that point in time? That's our question. Okay, so we're going to look at this whole thing and we're going to tr start transposing. Um, we've done transposition before a few times now on these videos, so divide both sides by 8 we start with. Vs over 8 equals to sine 2 pi ft minus pi by 8. Okay, move on a step further, save some paper. Um, how about taking the sine minus 1 of both sides? In that case, that sign is going to disappear. So we're going to have sine minus 1 of Vs over 8 equals 2 pi ft minus pi by 8. Okay. <clears throat> Let's change colour again, make it easier to follow. And then we're looking for, well, we want to isolate this t here. That's what we're interested in. So it might be a good idea to move the minus pi by 8 over to the left, and then it becomes plus pi by 8. So then we're going to have sine minus 1 Vs over 8, close those brackets, plus pi by 8 equals what's left over on the right there was just 2 pi Ft. Okay. 
And if you divide both sides, change color, divide both sides by 2 pi ft, so that thing there is going to go under. So we should have something conveniently t equals sine minus 1. Bs over 8 plus pi by 8 all over 2 pi times the frequency. Okay, I'm being very careful with frequency. We can look again at this and express it as t equals sine minus 1 and start putting in these numbers. So we know what Vs is. Vs is 4 divided by 8, close brackets, plus pi by 8, all over 2 pi f. 2 pi times f is frequency. And we set up here, uh, frequency was 2 megahertz, which is 2 times 10 to the 6. So it's that times 2 times 10 to the power 6. Okay, we can simplify this, change color again. And then we're looking at t equals 0.524. Now, this 0.524 has come about because I've got my calculator in radians mode because I noticed there's a pi here. Okay, so when you're using trig and you've got pi's involved, always put your calculator in radians mode. So sine minus 1 of 0 0.5 in radians mode should give you 0.524. And then you work out what pi by 8 is, of course, and you should get 0.393-ish. That's just rounded all over 4 pi times... One times ten to the six probably easier way for you to put it in on your calculator. You notice the fours appeared because we've got this two times this two here. Okay, and we should have an answer. T equals seventy-two point nine seven nanoseconds, which is equivalent to seventy-two point nine seven times 10 to the minus 9 seconds okay so I encourage you to go back have a look at the graph simulator and see if you can get this thing simulated in the graph simulator and it will give you a better feel for the whole problem and the ideas behind sinusoids and phase angles okay thanks and see you in the next video